Today, Mario takes on hundreds of Goombas, and there will be a lot of explosions. How well can Mario make use of the bombs in this level, and how big will the explosions get? And quick announcement, today we'll have a birthday Minecraft stream for a really good charity because it's my birthday, I hope you can make it. When Mario starts off in Super Bell Hill here, there are Goombas of all sizes up ahead, and some Goombas notice Mario and start running towards him. There are some bombs nearby, so Mario is ready. Mario grabs a bomb and throws it at the Goombas running toward him, and all the Goombas explode into smoke and coins, and the bomb beside him also explodes. Another big Goomba starts running towards Mario, so Mario grabs a bomb, throws it at a Goomba stack, and the Goombas come crumbling down. With another bomb throw, Mario takes out another Goomba tower and the big Goomba. Only a few Goombas are chasing Mario now, so he grabs another bomb, aims, but this explosion only takes out a few of the Goombas. Mario has now caught the attention of a sideways Goomba in the distance. Mario spin jumps and bounces off a single Goomba, getting high enough to reach the top of this Goomba stack, and ground pounds to flatten out the rest of the Goomba stack. Mario collects some coins, and the sideways Goomba angrily marches towards Mario. It is fuming, and you're not really sure if it's angry at Mario, or angry at the floor, for not being straight, but it is an angry Goomba that sometimes speeds up quite a bit when it walks on this slope. I thought I was imagining it at first, but it's definitely walking faster at certain angles here. Mario runs on up and three more Goomba towers notice him. Mario jumps on up farther, he climbs up a tree where he gets 100 seconds of extra time for the level, and when he pops out of the tree, another bomb appears. Mario grabs the bomb, aims very nicely at the Goomba stacks, and throws it. And that bomb takes out all three three Goomba stacks in a single hit, giving a lot of points, a lot of one-ups, and lots of coins and dust. Mario starts to collect these coins that are left behind now that this battle area is calming down, but he still hasn't forgotten about that crooked sideways Goomba yet. Mario climbs up this tree down here, and this tree also has a bomb pop out of it when you reach the top. How convenient for Mario. You might not have expected bombs to be hiding in trees, but here they are, and they're perfect for Mario. Mario gets the fire flower power up that's resting down here for him, and now Mario can shoot out fireballs. He climbs up the next tree to the right where there's a green star above the tree, so he gets the first green star in the level, and of course, there's also a bomb in this tree. Mario looks ahead in the level, and there is a giant toad! A very large red toad is there. And Mario sees some Goombas marching beyond the toad, so let's save this toad from all the Goombas here. Mario scouts the area up ahead, and he sees that there are three large Goombas down below, and up high there's one large Goomba and a stack of normal Goombas, and a stone block up ahead that blocks the path. He climbs up and he sees that it doesn't look like there's a way around this block, so he's got to take out all of these Goombas. Mario still hasn't forgotten about the crooked sideways Goomba from earlier, and when Mario presses the run button, he actually shoots out a fireball, and that fireball ends up defeating the crooked Goomba. So now let's take out these Goombas that are near the toad, and let's save this toad. Mario picks up a bomb from the lower tree, he jumps up, and he throws the bomb towards the lower Goombas. Even though the bomb landed a bit far away, it still exploded both of the Goombas that he was aiming at. The big Goomba and the Goomba stack up high, they notice this, and they start running towards Mario, but it looks like they've walked right into his trap, because now they're just in range for a bomb attack from Mario. The bomb destroys the big Goomba and almost the entire stack, but the top Goomba still survived, so Mario jumps and shoots out a fireball, and that takes care of that little Goomba. There's still one Goomba left at the bottom, so Mario goes back for the bomb, and then he is running along. It is almost ready to explode, so Mario's hoping that he can get the bomb to the Goomba in time, and he just makes it in time. The final Goomba is taken out, and a warp box spawns near the giant toad now. Mario bounces on top of the toad to thank him for the warp box, and shoots some fireballs as another way to say thank you. We pop into the warp box, and we are at a new large island now. To the left, there are bombs lined up like the start of a game of dodgeball, except in this game of dodgeball, there are 100 Goombas, and the balls explode. Mario kicks a bomb over, causing a chain reaction of explosions, with Goombas being destroyed, coins everywhere, and lots of one-ups for Mario from all of the points that he is getting. The coins rain down after the explosions settle. Mario runs over to another bomb, and just like a soccer ball, or a football, depending on where you're from, he kicks it, it explodes, 
setting off another chain reaction of explosions and taking out many Goombas. Despite all of these huge explosions and the many bombs that have gone off already, there are still a lot of Goombas left here in this green field. Mario snipes one with a fireball, he snipes another one with a fireball, and he realizes that the Goombas are actually pushing around the bombs when they're walking. It's a good thing that the Goombas aren't throwing bombs back at Mario. Mario tries to jump into the Goomba crowd to grab a bomb, he squishes a Goomba, grabs the bomb, jumps out safely, squishing a Goomba on the way out, but this bomb throw only takes out a few Goombas. The Goombas look like they're split into two main groups right now, and there are still quite a few bombs over by the second group of Goombas. Luckily for Mario, he's read the book The Art of War before, so he knows exactly what to do in this situation. He runs along as if he's getting ready to flank them, jumps and dives, takes out a few Goombas like this, and safely makes it over to the bomb in the top right when nobody is guarding it. Mario runs along, luring the Goombas into a large central mass, and when he throws the bomb, he takes out a surprisingly large number of Goombas with that single bomb throw, even though the number of the Goombas are starting to dwindle. The Goombas are getting weaker on both defense and offense, so Mario runs for another bomb, but he's scared that he'll take damage, so he blindly throws it. Not sure how effective that throw was, but at least Mario is still safe. Mario runs down and he has now lured all the Goombas away from the three remaining bombs. Mario grabs the first of the three remaining bombs, throws it at the Goombas, and takes out more of the Goombas. He grabs the second bomb, cuts through the Goombas to the right, then immediately turns back to the left and throws the bomb where the Goombas were, taking out another huge group of Goombas and racking up a lot of points. Many, many coins are on the field and very few Goombas are left. Mario collects some of these coins and runs circles around these Goombas, hurting them like a sheep herder. Except there's one big difference between Mario and a sheep herder. This sheep herder wants to throw a bomb at their sheep. So Mario the sheep herder grabs the final bomb, runs down, he gets the Goombas in view, and throws the bomb, taking out a few of the Goombas. Mario's very lucky that he still has his Fire Flower power-up because he can use that to take out the last of these few Goombas. Now it's time for Mario to explore the edges of the island. Up here on the post of this wooden fence, there is a wide Goomba. The wide Goomba won't come down to fight Mario, so Mario has to be careful because this Goomba has the advantage of having the higher ground. Mario takes a moment to reflect and meditate on what is happening in this situation and what he should do, because having a clear mind is the best way to approach a problem. But the wide Goomba doesn't look very happy about that. Mario does a ground pound jump, he wall jumps off of the post and shoots a fireball towards the Goomba, and that's high enough to take out the Goomba. Mario continues along the wooden fence, collecting some extra time since his time is starting to run a little bit low, and the next wide Goomba starts to run towards Mario. It's time for the epic battle on the fence, what will happen? Mario jumps and squishes the Goomba. And on the next wooden fence, we see a LONG Goomba. This is similar to the wide Goomba, except instead of being wide, it is long. Mario observes his enemy from a distance as it has a blank, goofy expression on its face, wandering about, pretending to be on guard duty and on the lookout for Mario. Mario does a spin jump over, gets noticed by the Goomba, shoots a fireball, and that fireball snipes the Goomba, taking it out. Mario heads along the fence, collecting some more extra time and trying to shoot fireballs before the next long Goomba reaches him. The long Goomba notices Mario and the fireballs take it out. Up ahead on the next fence post, you might see something interesting. There's something there. Those are the feet of a Goomba there, and we have some tall Goombas. And in the background, there are PANCAKE Goombas. Mario jumps up and after doing a wall jump, his fireball can take out the tall Goomba. Mario's fireballs miss the second tall Goomba, so he retreats, and after shooting some more fireballs, he hits the tall Goomba and he gets it. Mario jumps on top of the final fence and gets ready to face the Pancake Goomba. The Pancake Goomba angrily waddles back and forth, like a very flat Goomba penguin, and when Mario tried to jump on it, it actually dropped down. Mario also drops down, bringing the fight to the floor, and as this flat CD disc Goomba runs to towards Mario, Mario does a courageous jump and flattens out the flat Goomba even more. There's one more Pancake Goomba, and as Mario heads over there again, this Pancake Goomba is also eager to take the fight to the ground, so it drops down. Mario does one final jump on the Pancake Goomba, and all of the Goombas on this island have been defeated. There's a very large green star near this purple toad, which you might have noticed earlier, so Mario collects this green star number two, and Mario tries to thank the toad by giving it some fireballs. And this 
This toad is now too big to jump onto from here. Mario can't reach its head. But this toad really does appreciate the fireball present. Mario pops into this warp box and lands on a star power-up. He sees a clear pipe to the right, so he explores. He shoots the spike ball with his fire flower, which he doesn't have to do since he has the star power-up, so he can just walk right through it. And when he heads up the pipe, he gets the third green star and some extra time. And the world disintegrates for a moment while he's up there. To the left here, there are plenty of Goombas and several bombs for Mario. Mario jumps up, grabs another star power-up, throws a bomb, and that single bomb takes out a huge amount of Goombas here with a lot of dust from the explosion. Since Mario is invincible now, he's just moving around quickly and trying to take out lots of these Goombas with the bombs, throwing the bombs, kicking the bombs, and when the star power-up runs out, jumping on them and shooting fireballs. As Mario runs to the right, he can still hear the footsteps of one more Goomba, and it sneaks out from behind this corner like a jump scare in a movie, Mario shoots a fireball at it and takes it out. You might have noticed the P switch to the left here, and you might be wondering what this does when you step on it. When Mario steps on it, upside down Goombas go flying upwards to the sky. Goodbye Goombas! But this one Goomba right here isn't going anywhere it seems, and that's because there's actually a ceiling here that the Goomba stops on. There's an upside down invisible cloud platform so the Goomba doesn't fly away. So Mario jumps over to the next cloud platform, he grabs the star power up, and with that he can reach and defeat this ceiling Goomba. And once this ceiling Goomba has been defeated, our large yellow toad has a warp box ready for us now that we've defeated all of the Goombas. What a happy yellow toad we've got here. You can click the like button if that is a happy yellow toad. Now this might be surprising. There's a bomb right here at the start when you pop out of the warp box. But then the goal pole is also right here, and there's also a Goomba on top of a hard block. What would you do here? Would you try to beat the Goomba, or would you go for the goal pole? You could let me know in a comment. If you go for the goal pole, it turns out to be a fake goal pole. So Mario goes back, grabs the bomb, and throws it up at the Goomba. That explodes both the stone block and the Goomba, and Mario can go to the final area now. Mario pops out at the second half of Super Bell Hill, and this Super Bell Hill has really been quite the adventure. It reminds me of back when we played through Apocalypse Mode in Super Mario 3D World, and we had quite the adventure in that mod. Mario climbs up a tree, but surprisingly, this tree doesn't have a bomb in it. And that's not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. I never thought I'd be surprised for there to not be a bomb in a tree. Anyways, there is a pit of Goombas here, and they're going wild when Mario gets close. Mario grabs a bomb, throws it into the center of the pit, it explodes all the bombs around here, and all of the Goombas as well. Coins are everywhere, so Mario collects all of the coins, and he drops down and grabs the stamp. Looks like Mario is doing pretty well in Super Bell Hill here. Even though Mario has a lot of time, he climbs up this tree and grabs the extra time, and there's a new pipe right over here. There's normally a horizontal pipe here in the normal game, so Mario decides to go down this new vertical pipe. He pops out near the end of Super Bell Hill, and you might be wondering about this hole here, because there's normally a clear pipe that goes here. But you can actually step here without falling through, and the weirdest thing about this is how your footprints appear when you walk around this area. How are your footprints appearing down there if you're not actually stepping there? If you like seeing tests in games like this, more custom levels made by both myself and others, and fun gameplay, you might enjoy some of my other videos. I really appreciate you watching. Happy birthday to anyone whose birthday is around this time or when you're watching this. Thank you so much for this incredible one year and a bit on YouTube. This has actually been unbelievable. And I hope that you enjoy the Minecraft birthday stream if you're able to stop by. It's for a really great cause and I'm absolutely loving playing through Minecraft. There are so many great laughs and screams in the streams. I'm wishing all of you an amazing day ahead of you. Thank you so much for watching and take care everybody.